Okay. Uh, since Jonathan is not coming, then I think I, I will start by myself. Uh, thanks for attending. So uh, in this uh, roundtable, I will try to present some of uh, our uh, use case in API. So uh, and basically, we will have a, a, a question and answer after that or uh, along the sessions. So first, I, I will start with the the. Uh, What, what is actually the business values that, that typically uh, we can get with our uh, API implementations? I mean, of course, for each of the customers, there, there will be a, a different uh, values for uh, according to their business uh, 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 and, and in their operations. But, but uh, the most common uh, reasons and the, the most common result that uh, Typically, uh, we can get from from our uh, uh, sample implementation from from uh, all the customers are six uh, uh, points below. So, so first thing is that by API management, you can you can basically have uh, a new revenue stream. So, I mean, in, in this in this uh, uh, era of uh, digitalization, of course, uh, there is a, a lot of of uh, digital uh, revenues that that can be created using the API. For example, you can have a, a kind of like online store that, that help you to, to produce a new revenues uh, or also the, 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 you know, the, the courier uh, uh, business that can uh, deliver the, the goods to the customers using the, and the tracking is using the API. So basically uh, the revenue stream is, is uh, can be facilitated using the APIs, and of course, the, the API usage itself can be. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, sorry. Uh, please continue. Yeah, I mean, because you <laughs> you are not there, then I, I start. Yeah, first. there was some timing thing. Sorry about that. Yes, yes. My slide first. Mm -mm. Okay, so so I mean, uh, where are we? Okay, so uh, I mean, we, we we can of course monetize the the API uh, itself. So for example, uh, every usage for the API, we can charge uh, how many uh, dollars so, so that uh, it can easily become a new revenue for the companies that having the API management. The other way of, of uh, valuing it is that we can create a, a new digital services or digital product that that can be uh, uh, using the, the API infrastructure. For example, the insurance company, they can have the, the new products uh, uh, by, by combining multiple uh, product and, and uh, bundle it uh, using the API so that they can a customer can subscribe directly to to the, the to those product and services and then the the third thing is of course to improve the customer experience so i mean uh, by by using the api for example you can provide the customer uh, uh, profile or customer accounts where customer can can check for example their act, uh, active billing system and they they can also uh, uh, posting the inquiry of their current balance, for example, and they can have the question and answer with customer service directly from their account and so on. So uh, at the end, the, the, the API implementation in this case will, will improve the customer experience uh, 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 as a result. And then uh, uh, the number four is that we can provide a better visibility of of the data yeah i mean because uh, without api we have to settle the integration from one application to other application and and it's not uh, uh, it's not a, a simple way to query for for example one balance from uh, an application and other information from the other system but using the api we can just expose those applications and we have the API so we can get the data from the 
the source of the data itself and, and basically we can cut the 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 procedure that required to before to 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 retrieve the particular portion of data that that we need and another thing is that uh, using the api of course we can we can uh, extend our our coverage right i mean because uh, if we are providing the api then then uh, typically there are partners or developers that develop their application and at the end of the day we will using our own our uh, published api and they have also their own customers that we probably don't know about them so basically by providing the api we can also have indirect customers uh, uh, using those uh, a partner application that that uh, utilizing our published api and and the last thing that that typically is is uh, uh, can we can obtain using the 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 api management is that uh, we have uh, more flexible interaction with with our partner right i mean uh, typically for for car, uh, manufacturing company for example they will have a lot of uh, interaction with their supplier for example so we we can just uh, providing the the b2b api so that the supplier for example can can update their their inventories and and we can also provide the the uh, purchase order to them using the API itself. So it basically will simplify the, the way uh, the organization interact with, with their partner. So yeah, we, we can see that that uh, at the end of the day, API management will will uh, not only uh, make uh, integration is easy, but but also will create the business values uh, for 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 business uh, users. So we we can basically uh, uh justify or or uh having the return uh, of the api investment uh from these six uh, items that i described before and then uh now i i will will, will try to to uh, explain a bit uh, some of the the implementations from our customers the uh, uh, I mean, uh, we have currently we have uh, more than 100 uh, API management customers. Uh, to be exact, is 117 uh, around the world, and and I basically take the the five use cases of them uh, from the banking industries, from insurance industries, from utilities, retail, and also uh, uh, courier or cargo uh, companies. So let's start with, with the, the, the banking, right? I mean, and this is the, the customer examples from Italian banking. So there was a, a, a requirements uh, or regulation to, to have the PSD2 or payment service directive that basically uh, requires banking to open API uh, to, and provide the data as a service to their to their partner or as well to their customers. So um, this this of course will 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 uh, trigger a, a security uh, requirement because banks, for, as we understand, right, is is the uh, having the the money of the customers and uh, providing the data to, to the customers will will uh, of course uh, requires the regulate regulation to to uh, provide the compliance and as well as the security requirements and by using the web methods ipa management they can they can uh, expose uh, easily the the data and basically they can share to the partner and the customer without uh, having a, a security threat because we have uh, uh, comprehensive quite comprehensive security the features and as well as we also uh, regularly uh, comply to the security compliance like ISO and uh, ISMS and also SOC2 and SOC3. Uh, the API management also provide the, the control to monitor the service response time so that uh, the uh, Viper Banka can can basically react if there is an 
an error of the, the API and, and or uh, as well we, we provide the threat protection so that the, the API is secure from the uh, public attack, for example, uh, the denial of, of services. There is the first use cases and, and, and the second one is from the insurance. Uh, yeah, I mean, and here the cloud insurance from Israel is basically a, a, a insurance provider. They they basically uh, uh, trying to become a, a digital insurance provider. So they they previously have a mainframe and they would like to expose it uh, the the mainframe functionality as the API. And then uh, uh, by using uh, software AG product, they they can integrate uh, the, with their mainframe and and as well basically they can. Uh, provide the API for online transaction using the API management, and basically they are they they can do the digital transformation uh, from their existing mainframe uh, infrastructure to become uh, API based uh, online insurance. So yeah, I mean the API management uh, in addition in addition to that the API management also can provide the the governance, which means that. They can reuse as much as possible the functionality of the mainframe and and uh, basically uh, uh, reduce the cost of developing it uh, uh, that they previously doing the different function for its uh, requirements. So that was uh, the story from uh, the insurance. So we can basically. Uh, 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 Transform the 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 mainframe uh, environment into the the modern API infrastructures, and reducing the the costs that uh, typically uh, used for the development of the functionality. And then and then the the third one is is actually uh, I take from the energy uh, industries. Uh, so we here we have the EDF. Uh, electricity the france the the, the france uh, energy producer that that basically uh, uh, requires to to provide the the application to their customers and as well uh, to provide the the platform for their partner to 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 be able to uh, to bundle the energy services into uh, into other offerings. So, uh, software AG helping this uh, EDF uh, using the API uh, by by providing the API platform uh, to enable uh, them to provide two things. The, the first one is the for the customer APIs. So, using these customer APIs, basically. Uh, EDF can improve the customer experience, so so they 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 can have an account that they can uh, manage the the you know the the actual billing and they can control uh, the energy and they can uh, uh, turn on and turn off uh, the energy consumption for for their own home and, and also getting a lot of uh, energy saving tips and, and so on. So this is uh, uh, done by using the API that connecting the, the, the mobile application into the, the EDF backend so that to improve their customer experience. And the second one is that uh, EDF also has a lot of partnering that, that providing the energy, for example, kind of like housing uh, uh, corporate that providing kind of like apartment to the customer so this partner is basically uh, will will require a, a combined uh, functionalities right so it's, it's not a typical uh, customers but but requires a, a combined function to to for example provide a cumulative uh, uh building for multiple rooms for example so so uh, basically edf uh, providing this partner with with some apis that can basically aggregate multiple uh, uh 
building uh, for for multiple customers so that they can easily providing those to the to the, their corporate customers and basically uh, enable their the their services to 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 provide the energy consumption as as, as, as a corporate consumption yes and and uh, next uh, use cases coming from kiabi kiabi is uh, kind of like uh, closing retail in, in French. So Kiabi is basically um, providing the the clothes. Yeah, I mean they sell clothes. So and, and uh, what Kiabi see is that to be survive on this digital world, they they should transform themselves from. Uh, a conventional store uh, to become a, a omni-channel retail, right? I mean, they 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 should transform themselves so that they can uh, open the online store and basically serve the customers that wants to buy the the clothes uh, over the world uh, by using their applications. And basically, Software AG is helping Kiabi to do that and. Uh, in addition to to the opening of multiple uh, website uh, online site across the countries we also providing them api management and in memory data management so that uh, uh, the the web that is uh, open uh, across the countries is uh, optimal using the in memory uh, transactions as well as the api management itself is basically important to to simplify uh, uh, their business process right so uh, for example the the online store uh, from one country can directly connect to the inventory system in, in the other countries and and so on so basically uh, we provide them the the new business process that transition help them to transition from a conventional store to the, the omni-channel retail that can uh, serve the customer across the countries using the, the online store. And the other, the other, uh, the last uh, use cases that I have here is the, the cargo services. Here, uh, uh, what I have is the Aras Cargo is the Turkey's uh, cargo services that having a uh, large distribution across the countries and and here is that yeah i mean they they have the the mobile application used by the courier uh, and, and that requires a lot of uh, multiple services so uh, the, the courier can for example get the real time route tracking from the the central application and as well as they can update the status of the deliveries and, and uh, get the route automation uh, uh, recommendation and so on so basically our api management enables uh, the mobile application to to select the or to invoke the api and then get the the response from the the central application so basically we, we enable the the courier to 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 have the more sophisticated mobile application that having a lot of services and the other things that we enable in this customer as well is their a b2b integration so uh, you can you can imagine that the the uh, uh, cargo networks will will have to interact with for example warehouse uh, where they store the uh, when they send a, a package from one country to the other country they will have to put it in the warehouse and transport it using the transport uh, services as well right so uh, we not only improve the the courier mobile application but also provide this aras cargo with with the integration to their warehouses and as well to their uh, transportation partners. So at the end of the day, uh, Aras Cargo can transform themselves from um, the regular uh, logistic company to become the, the 
the modern uh, logistic company that that can serve um, multiple uh, requirements uh, in, in shorter time and as well as uh, with the better uh, validity of their uh, deliverable uh, cargo to the customers okay so i think that is the 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 top five for or some uh, sample use case from from the company that that become our customers so yeah i then i return to jonathan for maybe question and answers. yeah well thanks very much mackie you can hear me okay Great. yes so how did you decide on the top five uh, okay, that's interesting question. So, uh, yeah, as I, I said, we have a 117 customers, right? And basically, from those 100 customers, basically, our main industry is these five. So, okay. banking, insurance, utilities, retail, and curious. So, I take uh, one sample from each so that uh, basically we, ha we hope we can have a quite uh, uh, this representative uh, for the user. Yes, yeah, so as well as solution architect and engagement manager, you're also connoisseur of case studies. You, uh, you, you, you edited very well. Thanks very much. I think for the, uh, the participants, the, the people, we are running late. If it's okay with you, with some questions, would that be okay? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So well, we won't keep this going for too long, <laughs> but we would like to at least keep it uh, keep it so we can ask some questions. Now there have been some questions which have come in before, and we welcome some questions on the chat. But to get things started, right? I noticed a lot of these case studies had things in common, right? And they are very impressive. So things in common would be the need for IT to scale in order to this very broadly speaking, typical digital transformation. Yeah? However, I guess they didn't happen overnight. They evolved, right? As part of a, a full of yeah. microservices uh, implementation. So what, yeah. what, what was your experience in this? For example, additional building blocks which were needed um, in, in the management of, of this change, be it agile, be it more technology, be it integration with business. Okay. How did they evolve? I think that's the, mm. yeah, yeah, it, it, that's a very, relevant questions to the, the, the session that I present this morning. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, as, as, as you mentioned, you, you're very correct that, that the tra digital transformation does not happen overnight, right? So typically customers is, is ha now having the monolithic applications and uh, along their business uh, objective, they transform some of it to the microservices and and then of course we as an API management provider uh, have to have uh, capabilities to to handle uh, those uh, uh, development right so we we are not only capable of uh, providing APIs for monolithic applications and, and traditional application but we also uh, uh, grow along the customer itself. So, I mean, if they now transforming into the microservice application, we, we, we also have uh, the different product called micro gateway and app mesh that can basically facilitate the, the API and policy controls uh, between the microservices. And we also provide the, the API management uh, in the cloud edition, for example. So uh, if, for example, customer have moved some of the uh, their application into the clouds, then we can also doing that because uh, our platform is not only on-premise, but we are also having them uh, in cloud. Yeah, so, so basically uh, we can, we can uh, grow along the customers because we have also additional components that we can implement uh, uh, together with the IPA management. Yeah, because you talked about cloud insurance, and I recall you said something about mainframe, and then you yes. said something about, if I remember, how they could then integrate with the mainframe with API, not integrate, they could work with the policies which were already in place. Yes. The enforcement, the compliance, the governance, and I found that really interesting. Um, 
would that be the the main example you have of that? I mean, can you speak to that point any more? How how these policies, informants, enforcements, governance procedures could work across multiple API use cases? Okay, okay, uh, that's also uh, a good question. Yeah, I mean, uh, many companies uh, implement API gateways, but they are uh, mainly uh, concerned with the security, right? But but they forgot that by the API management, actually they can have uh, quite a lot of policies that that they could implement to their their APIs, right? So uh, in software AG, basically we have uh, a policy uh, enforcement platform uh, inside the the API gateways that actually is quite unique. Uh, I mean, we we can uh, have. Uh, uh, multiple different scopes for the API. So we can implement the policies uh, 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 in general. So, I mean, uh, applicable for all. Do it uh, because, for example, one API have a different behavior with the other APIs. And uh, in addition to, uh, those two, we can also uh, uh, implement those uh, scope based. So we we can have the APIs that having a different methods or operation, and, and we can implement the policies only to particular methods of operation inside the API. So by having those three uh, layer of uh, app, uh, policy design, we can very uh, rapidly uh, 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 create our policies uh, and uh, apply it over uh, the multiple APIs. So, for example, if we already have hundreds of APIs, we don't have to create the policy one by one. We just create a global policy template and basically deploy it over those hundreds of APIs, and and then we just uh, uh, improve it. Uh, uh, by having the other two scopes uh, for the APIs that having the different behavior, something like that. So basically, uh, related back to your question, so yeah, I mean, this is a uh, very good technology that, that can help customers to basically uh, apply the very specific uh, policies to their existing APIs without having uh, so many uh, development and so many uh, things to configure. Yes, yeah, so so assuming they have the policies <laughs> in the first place. But across all the industries, it's, it's really a question on how, how they evolved and how they did their digital transformation using microservices and API. So thanks for that. I, look, we've got about five minutes. Uh, invite anybody who's got any questions, if you're managing to digest all this good information, to put it into the chat. The chat will be open after we close the session, so you can get on and you can also ask the questions. Um, so I, I guess this is all in addition to the, the usual sort of approach of architecting, which is you know, system integration based approach, right? How are we going to integrate stuff? Um, so um, how, how is that typically required? If you could just put, put a picture together where people might start, would it be through these policies? Would it be through um, other building blocks or system integration? How how would how would you describe the journey, or is it different for every single company? Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. So typical journey, uh, of course. Uh, there there are two things, right? I mean, uh, the first case is that the, the customers is already ready with their API, so they 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 already have. Uh, uh, their applications uh, having the, the ready API to be published, and we just provide the management layer on top of that. Uh, the other type type of the customers, or this is actually uh, a lot more than the first one, is that they don't have anything yet. So I mean, uh, they typically have a monolithic applications, and they don't have uh, any integration on top on top of the layer and uh, basically, they they jump into uh, providing the API, and then what what uh, we should do uh, uh, with those kind of customers. So we need to have the integration layer first, right? I mean, uh, basically that's the the uh, 
the surface layer that basically uh, become a baseline of every APIs is basically uh, uh, integration services, right? So uh, uh, we need to we need to put the integration layer uh, uh, on top of their their uh, monolithic application, and then only we can publish it as the API and to be used by the other uh, application or the the external consumers. So. So yeah, that, that's the typically the journey for for these customers. But uh, luckily, the in software AG, uh, API management platform itself is uh, built on the same platform with the ESB. Or, or I mean, uh, or ESB or SOA is actually having the same. Uh, base product as the api so we can easily uh, uh, provide uh, both integration layer as well as the api layer uh, to this customer for example uh, the the one that i told you before right the, the mainframe integration right so we we basically pro can provide the, the mainframe integration and basically to expose the, the mainframe function or uh, uh, rpg or uh, vsum as, as a service that can be published as as the API at the end, so basically we 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 can provide those uh, two steps uh, in one package, which is uh, API management and integration. Yeah, so one begins to see how how you could start off with nothing, and how for the example of the enterprise you've given, how they could then fit it into their existing architecture policies and 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 other systems that they have. So it seems to be quite a workable approach. You make it sound very easy. I'm sure it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it's it's easy of uh, in the concept, but of course uh, the the implementation is, uh, typically we will, will go step by step, right? I mean, yes. Uh, yeah, as you say, it's it's a progress, not not an overnight uh, uh, objective, right? Yeah, and of course we had many other questions. Well, we had a few other questions, and they come in about aligning to the business, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> uh, what you... Well, how, how, how do you match the right, the right processes to the business? Revenue versus cost. So this is a whole nother story. But uh, it seems that each of these cases had a, had a good idea of where they wanted to start from, from a business side as well as from a technology side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean uh, your question is uh, 100 million questions. <laughs> yeah. So every every project that, that we have, of course, uh, uh, will be measured by those two parameters, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 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 the benefit to the business and as well, uh, uh, the cost that that is uh, spent by the project, right? Yeah. So yeah. But I mean, uh, implementing the API, of course, is we need to to we need to be uh, correctly choosing the the use case. Yeah. That's what I I, I mentioned. I mean, yeah. uh, if possible uh, for the piloting or or uh, to the uh, first project, we should uh, have a good use case that can not only improving the the revenues but also can. Yeah, I mean, improving that the objective that I have told uh, in my first slide, right? So, this justification is basically uh, important for for company or customers to to uh, to put more uh, uh, investment in the API management itself, right? So yeah, so I think yeah, I, 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 mean, th I think your use case. Sorry to cut you short. I think your use cases covered that very well. Could could how could people contact you or, or software AG to get more information about uh, these use cases so they can go back and, and figure where 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 they might find more opportunities for APIs? Uh, yeah, I think I think you can go to our website. Uh, uh, we have uh, softwareag.cloud that you can also try the the, the API gateway and uh, our product. And also, you can go to my email. Uh, I think uh, the API days have my email as well, so that we can we can have a, uh, another discussion if it's required uh, to basically to go down uh, for the use case that they they might want to implement. Okay, so with that, Mackie, thank you very much for your uh, 
use cases and explanations. And thanks for everyone for attending. Um, we have overrun a little bit. If you have got opportunity, we invite you to stay around and the chat room will remain open and uh, we'll try and address your questions. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. If, if there's nothing else, let's conclude this session. Thank you very much. Yeah, I thought you are lost to get here. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 fine. We we just keep the session open. I think there's other other talks. So yeah. So uh, what I'll do is I'll I'll sign off now, and everyone can get on with their their, their day. But we will keep the chat open. Sure. All right. Thanks yeah. a lot, uh, and thanks for attending the session. Thank bye. You. Bye bye.